So, update on the <laughs> on the eggs. <clears throat> okay, I'll give you a peek and then I'm going to close it real quick. Note any changes I've made. So, water bottles. They're like a heat sink. They help stabilize the temp. Um, the more mass in the incubator that, that has the heat, holds the heat, makes it more stable. There is large fell coaching, large fell coaching. Back there, Jubilee Orpington. On this Jubilee Orpington, um, it was a close one. It looked like only one had start had really started, and that the other two had started and then keeled over. It's my microwave. Coffee, it's a thing. Anyway, um, one of them started, and the others, they had alb albumin changes, but I didn't see any veins or anything, so I thought they'd probably died. Just barely started and then died. Well, not so much. There's three of them. They're all growing. They're all alive. I saw them doing the hoochie-coochie. So, these are the ones with the blown-out air cells once again. So, six, twelve of the... Giant coachings, the standard coachings, and then three of the Jubilee Orpingtons. Um, okay, I'm going to shut this. So, let's recap. All these had um, screwed up air cells. Moderately screwed up air cells. To the point that if I would have laid them on their sides, they would have died. Um, every last one of those are alive every last one of them and it is day seven every last one of those are alive i did not on the large fell coachins haven't lost a one they're all alive they're all growing they're all doing really well i am hearing that if they make it to day 12 they will um they run their veins up into the membranes and the membranes strengthen in that way that if they make it to t day 12, then they're almost as good as any normal egg. They, they're pretty much safe at that point. Uh, you could still have hatching problems like with any egg, but they will be on par with regular eggs. Um, if I question an air cell at all, I'm just going to keep them upright. Shut up, microwave. I'm going to keep them upright until hatch, and then I, I'll move them out of the cups they're in, and I'll move, it, move them to some situation that will hold them, you know, kind of upright, and won't block, you know, far, farther down on the egg. Just, if they pip in the wrong place, they can drown, and that would be my biggest concern. So, I'm going to have to watch them careful. Um... I'm hoping their air cells will solidify or be solidified at the 12 day mark and then I'll just keep them upright until hatch time to lock down and then I'll put them on their sides or I'll put them mostly on their sides maybe use a paper towel a little bit of paper towel to prop them up you know, just slightly direct the chick towards the up end a little bit but anyway um, every last one Every freaking last one is completely fine. I cannot believe it. I did not know this trick. I don't know why nobody told me this trick before now. Um, they're fine. Every last one. I haven't lost a one. These are shipped eggs with the air cells all screwed up. I haven't lost a one. They all started. So their fertility was good when I got them. They all started. And it's day seven. And they're still kicking around happy so I may actually as long as that you know I have the humidity right the hatch you know hopefully will go well maybe I'll lose one or two but I'm other than that the hatch will go well I'll have a, a crap load of these and then there's the regular incubator oh changes changes to the situation I'll pop this open a little bit You'll see several goose eggs in there. Yeah. And there's my large fowl coaching. And the turkeys, they're getting ready soon to go on lockdown. Like, like four days. They're going to go into lockdown. And this will be empty. Um, 
you see these goose eggs. I'll shut it and then I'll tell you about the goose eggs. So, I started out with Sebastia Paul, colored Sebastia Paul, and Dulap Tolu's geese. Um, and that was many years ago. Uh, my Dulap Tolu's got old, they died. I don't have any more of them. Um, I have a couple of Sebastia Paul and Straight Feather Mix babies that grew up. And I have one of the original female Sebastia Pauls left. Well, the, the female Sebastia Paul, she's very old, very old. Um, I wasn't going to incubate geese. But the parents outside, the mixed daughters, the, the half Sebastia Paul, um, in some instances half Dulap, you know, half other things, they raised their own family like I put on a previous video. They raised five babies. All oh, those babies are big now. Um, I wasn't going to incubate eggs, but the Sebastia Paul mama once maybe twice a month, she'll pop out an egg, and it's rough. You can tell she's an old, old hen. Her eggs are not, you know, perfect anymore. So, it's Monday. Last Friday, she popped out an egg. So I thought, well, she's my very last Sebastia Paul, so I'm going to incubate the egg. It's not going to start anyway, because she's too old. There, there's no way. Uh, I'll throw it in there just because. Yeah, so I can say that I did. I can feel better that I did. Well, it started. <laughs> it's started and it's growing. Um, I don't know how long it will keep growing. It might make it all the way through. Like I said, her, her eggs are not the best. They're powdery on the outside. She's laying extra calcium on them. Um, yeah, they're, they're not perfect, normal eggs. Um... So, because raising one baby goose can be a trauma, they imprint on you, and then you've got to mother hen them or they cry because you're all they have. Um, it's so much better if you have another baby goose because then they keep each other company when you're not attending to them. It's, it's just better. So I threw in um, the last goose egg that she laid, which a week, a week and a half before that, it, it may not even, the, the germ cell, if it was fertile at one time, may not even be fertile anymore. But it was in the fridge. The fridge can kill the germ cell too. But I, 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 out of desperation, I threw it in there. Today it didn't look like it started, but yesterday the other goose egg didn't look like it started. And then I looked at it today and whoa, whoa mama, yep, it started. You can tell today. So just because today it doesn't look started doesn't mean tomorrow it isn't going to suddenly look different. So <clears throat> I yanked out, I, I've, had, I've got oh, three or four over, you know, the last six weeks, I guess. Um, I had them in the fridge. I just, I threw them all in. It just, it, it, this method of incubation is called properly. There's a name for this method of incubation. It's called the throw it against the wall and see if it sticks method. I put them all in. Probably none of the ones from the refrigerator will start. But they might. I've, I've taken chicken eggs from the grocery store. Brown chicken eggs that I bought at the grocery store that sat in my fridge for a prolonged period of time, you know, over a week. I've taken them and put them in the incubator and they've started and grown. So, it's worth a try. So anyway, I might have baby geese. Um, if it's only one baby goose and it goes to term and it hatches, please, dear Lord up above, can you please make it a male? 
because males cover several females. Um, I, if I can get his, his genetics going on the babies of the hens this year, they've all got Sebastopol in them. If I can get him going on them, we're going to get more Sebastopol babies. We are. So anyway, that's the update on the eggs. We have, we're a third of the way through. We have 15 more days to go. So I guess I'll do another update, no, oh, day 12. So in about a week, I'll, I'll do another update and let you know if their air cells have solidified what I found. Right now, some of them look pretty stable, the air cells. Some of them are still wiggly. So um, I'll let you know on day 12 what they're looking like and what the plan is going forward. But holy crap, this is a revolution. This is a freaking revolution. I did not know this. Why did, why did I not get the memo? Uh, it's horrible. Oh, by the way, another tip. Um, I heard this from somebody else. This is a patented process for hatchery eggs. You spray mist or dip them in hydrogen, pro in hydrogen peroxide 3% dilution before you set them in the incubator. And you can also do it just prior to hatch when you put them on lockdown. Um, it, this is actually a patented process for hatcheries to increase health and hatch rates. And it works, apparently. Well, that hydrogen peroxide in your bathroom, guess what? It's 3% dilution. So, um, I've all these eggs, every last one of these eggs got sprayed with hydrogen peroxide really well before they were put in the, in the incubator. Um, so that's another tip for you. Third tip for you. I just found, I get these memos late. Nobody tells me these things. The chicken gods do not impart this knowledge to me on time. I just found out that the light on my cell phone you know, on the back of the cell phone, you hit the light button, the flashlight button, and the light comes on. It's perfect for candling eggs. Who would have thought? Um, my pen light is not doing such a good job at getting through the shells of the brown and dark eggs. Um, I was struggling today really hard. Um, cell phone, that light, cut right through it. Could see no problem. Who would have thought? Why do I never get these memos? Anyway, till the next video, bye.